Uh, good morning, everyone. As uh, Marek has already indicated, uh, I am joining you from South Africa, and it is really my pleasure to get this invitation. I was really looking forward uh, to be uh, in Warsaw. That would have been my first time uh, visiting uh, Poland, uh, but I guess that uh, this should still happen in, uh, in future. So I would like to share with you um, so the role of cyber infrastructure in the development here in Africa. So I will take you through uh, some of the things that we are doing and our journey on developing the cyber infrastructure um, in South Africa. So first of all, uh, just on this slide here is just to give you um, where we are. Uh, our supercomputer is sitting in Cape Town. And I guess you can see my pointer there. Cape Town is here, that part of South Africa. And this is our building. And you can see the nice views that you can see. Um, immediately after the snow burn in traveling, I will recommend that uh, to our center. So we uh, have got what we call a national integrated cyber infrastructure. And initially, we had just the computing, which is the center for high performance computing. And we have uh, also here the broadband connectivity across the country, which is uh, on the Sandran. And we're also looking at uh, long term data infrastructure. So basically, for our researchers in the country, we can be able to provide the compute, uh, the connectivity, and also long-term data. Uh, some of the important projects that we're looking at utilizing these facilities is the large-scale science projects like your SKA. Uh, we also run a tier two facility for CERN uh, for high energy physics, uh, mainly for the Alice and the Atlas experiment. And we've got big users in bioinformatics. We also uh, pioneering most of the fourth industrial revolution uh, projects in the country. Uh, but uh, more importantly, we're looking at coordinating the efforts of uh, high performance computing uh, for the researchers in, 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 in SADC. And I'm not sure here, I wanted to switch on the, the video, but um, I, don't, I don't see it in this case. If you are able to switch it on for me, that's it. Then so that at least I can be able to connect with the audience. Um, so our vision is to make sure that we drive the country for competitiveness. So for that, uh, we enable education, research, and innovation, and we provide share access to cyber infrastructure facilities. And this is for the whole country. So all the research community in South Africa and the research institution. So all the universities, we have got 26 research institutions, I mean, research universities um, in South Africa, and all of them use our uh, infrastructure. So, and the mission is to always try and provide world class uh, infrastructure, uh, which is integrated. But as Marek uh, said in the opening, one of the things that we're looking at is to develop uh, human capital in the country. So, training plays an important role in our uh, endeavor. So those are mainly our strategic objectives. As we can see, looking at the infrastructure, looking at making sure that we position South Africa uh, hosting of a large scale science project like the SKA, and we provide human capital development. Uh, the other part, as I indicated, we're also looking at the Southern African Development Corporation in Europe, I think there you have what you call PRAISE, which is a partnership for advanced computing in Europe. So we have got the similar thing that we want to develop also. 
original competencies in high performance computing. And that is what we call the SADRAC Cyber Infrastructure Framework. And I will touch a little bit on some of those activities that we do. So on these activities is to make sure that uh, we train people, we have got uh, uh, the meeting with all the member states and also we have got uh, this uh, uh, report that is reporting to the ministers in SADAC and the ministers participate in these discussions and they also uh, look at what are some of the things that we should be focusing on. For an example, uh, the need for cyber infrastructure to contribute to data analytics, artificial intelligence, and, and drive the fourth industrial revolution for SADAC is one of the key things that uh, uh, it is being looked at. So I will just go in now in terms of how we um, put together our infrastructure. As you will see, on the left-hand side, we have got the compute requirements. And on the compute requirements, this will be our high-performance computing with uh, the Scratch, which is mainly the parallel file system. And we have got uh, the long-term uh, data repositories, which we call the data-intensive research. And these have got also their own storage systems. So our design is in such a way that for the users which use HPC systems, they can be able to get that data into this medium term. But in a long term, we are looking also at building an archival system, in this case, that could be a team. This is still a project that we are still working on. So basically, the users will have access uh, to fast storage, which is linked to our computing systems, and they can be able to store their data into uh, the long-term archiving solutions. And uh, how do we move the data around the country? We have got uh, the NRAN, which is the National Research uh, uh, Backbone. As you can see around the country now, we've got this is covering all the institutions around the country. And normally we buy capacity from the telcos around here, but also where there is no capacity, we build our own fiber. For an example, if you look at this link here, that is a link that will be taking the data from the SKA site in the Karoo and taking it uh, to Beaufort West and ultimately it will be coming to Cape Town. So in Cape Town here, we'll be able to collaborate with all other institutions because you know the square kilometer array is not just a South African project, but we have got other countries that are involved in that. So this will be able to provide that. We also have got the redundancy on the eastern side, which can be able to be used uh, when the fiber on this link here is not working. So basically we can be able to collaborate with the whole world and this in preparation to hosting the square kilometer array. Currently our infrastructure, this is our system, which has been on the top 500 uh, for some time. Now this machine has been over six years, I mean, over four years, uh, it's going towards the fifth uh, year, and in the next years we will be replacing this system. Mainly it is CPU based, uh, it is about uh, 1.6 uh, petaflops at the moment. And we also have got uh, the GPU architecture for some of the workloads like your chemistry and material science workloads, but also this architecture also, it is being used for machine learning. You can see the three uh, nodes up here, the highly dense GPUs, four GPUs per node, and the six nodes down here, these are three GPUs per node, and we're using that mainly the, the top ones for machine learning applications. So that creates that environment with variable architectures for our users. And our systems are, are heavily utilized. You can see on this, uh, mainly our academic institutions, which are universities, 
We have got the science councils, which are the South Africa public. 5% of this goes also to our South African industry. South African industries, uh, when they use our systems, they also have to pay. So we work on a cost recovery basis, but we also give our capacity also to the African partner countries on the SKA. So this gives you a utilization, it's very important. These are all the universities in South Africa. You can see here University of Pretoria, University of KwaZulu-Natal, Stellenbosch. These are all the universities. So basically, all the 26 universities utilize this system. And that just gives you the percentages on how the systems are utilized. And this gives you for the different science councils, like your, the CSIR is the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, the Agricultural Research Council. So these are the different science councils, South African space agencies, uh, the South African uh, Nuclear Engineering Corporation, South African Weather Services, all these are the science councils also that use um, the facility. And here, these are the different countries that I talked about on the SKA partner countries, like your Ghana, Namibia, Mozambique, and Kenya. So they are able to have access to the uh, HPC systems from uh, their various countries. And some of our industries that use uh, the systems here, this is a mining uh, uh, industry, uh, mining research. This one here, Johnson Murphy, also looking at materials, uh, the BS Marine on my, my, uh, mining of diamonds. And then we have got some engineering companies here, but also the bioinformatics companies. So these are the companies that use the systems on cost recovery basis. Our long-term infrastructure plan, obviously, we currently we now have got uh, the backbone around the country's 100 giga uh, across the country. We're planning on a long-term 40 petabyte uh, storage. These are the projects that have been implemented uh, from 2019. But uh, with our roadmap from 2021, 2022, we'll be building the 10 petaflop system. And normally our system will take uh, about six years. And in between, we do have but also some uh, proof of concept systems that we are building, looking at the different architectures that are coming. Uh, like mainly at the moment, our system is Intel based. But uh, I guess you will agree with me that uh, in uh, the next couple of years, very interesting architectures uh, start to emerge from your AMD and also uh, the different accelerators from Intel, AMD, and NVIDIA. So those will be worth to look at in our new uh, architecture that we will be putting. And we, we also built an ecosystem. Like in this case, this is where some of our universities don't have uh, the HPC systems. And also on the countries that are on the SKA, there is no computing systems there. So we also have got an innovative way on how we build the skills in those countries. And what we do, we take our HP systems when they retire and we take single racks, we distribute to those different countries. Through that, we can provide the infrastructure, we can develop skills, and we also start developing research programs in the various countries. Just to touch a little bit on those, you can see here uh, the different countries like here in Mauritius, uh, Namibia, where we have got uh, different universities that we supported there, uh, Botswana, Zambia, Madagascar, Ghana, Mozambique, and Kenya. And we have provided the infrastructure but we also do the training for system administrators. Uh, we get dedicated staff that are uh, managing this system. So we provide all that training. And from there also, 
uh, provide the research and activities for them. So some of the countries that are not on our HPC ecosystem, but they have got their own facilities like Tanzania, Zimbabwe, Eswatini, and Lesotho. So basically the aim is to be able to cover all those uh, uh, universities. As you can see here, this is one of the oldest systems that you might uh, recognize, Ranger, which was based on the Sun system. We worked together with the Texas Advanced Computing. They gave us a system. We repurposed one single rack, and this make a supercomputer for the university in Botswana. They use this for their own training. But at a later stage, they bought also their own supercomputer. But this was very important for them to start the computing uh, infrastructure in their country. Zimbabwe, that's uh, the system uh, in Zimbabwe. They built this, uh, I think it's together with uh, um, uh, one of the Chinese uh, manufacturers. And currently Zimbabwe have got their own uh, infrastructure now. And we also provide a training. This picture here shows you um, the participant at uh, the uh, supercomputing conference. And this participant also, they spend some time at a workshop uh, in Texas. And these are the system administrators from different research labs in the continent. So we've got people from Zimbabwe, Mauritius, and these people here were trained to go and start the HPC uh, facilities in their own countries. Again here, not just HPC, we're also looking at a workshop like in Denver in Supercomputing 17, where they were looking at understanding risk in shared cyber ecosystem. So in this case, looking mainly at cyber security. So we try to introduce them, not just to the computing, but also how to secure those systems. In terms of the utilization, I'm not going to go deep into each and every one of them, but uh, you can see that uh, our systems here, the use of the systems here uh, in computational mechanics, uh, this is the pyrometallurgy, and this is the design of a DC arc furnace. This is the actual photographic image of the DC arc furnace, and this was uh, simulated. So here we're working together with uh, the researchers at these different institutions uh, to do these uh, computations. Another interesting application here is uh, for the diamond mining. Uh, you can see that in the seabed, so you have got uh, the alluvial diamonds that are mined and using the CFD computations, uh, you are able to uh, do the dewatering subsystem designs. And this is a dewatering subsystem design, and these are the researchers that are working on that. So uh, that's the use of this HPC systems by our industry in South Africa. And again, here, this covers a wide range. Like for an example, in here, this was a design of a building in one of the cities in South Africa called uh, Port Elizabeth. And in Port Elizabeth, uh, you've got uh, uh, a lot of wind. So the building there, you have to understand your computational free dynamics so that you can be able to position the building properly. And this is the work that we are doing. Our approach here is that in some of the institutions, there's no capacity. So we have got our own on-site engineers that did this work. And these are the work that is being done by our uh, different uh, industries here. Uh, this is some of the work that is being done by the industry and universities on high-speed trains. And here, this is the work that we have done in the design of the radio astronomy dish to look at the electromagnetic interference in designing the square kilometer array uh, dish. So, so some of the work again, uh, looking at South Africa still has got a large um, 
number of uh, coal fire yard power plants. And this is the work that we have been doing uh, in looking at the nitrogen deposition around the areas in South Africa where there is a lot of power plants. You can see the red there showing you the high intensity of the nitrogen deposition. And you will see that around those, those are where the power plants are. As you move away from the power plants, uh, you can see the nitrogen deposition here reducing. And then as you go further away in those areas, less nitrogen deposition. So that's the work that is also being done using our supercomputer. Uh, Marek talked about uh, our work with uh, the students. And in our students, we take students from all universities around the country. They should be undergraduate students. And we train these students. They spend one week with us during our winter, which is June, July. One week, uh, we train the students. And after training the students, the students go and design their own supercomputer. They come into the national competition, and from there we select six students. The students come from various universities. And these are the students that normally participate in international supercomputing. You can see that since in 2013, uh, our students got the first prize. 2014, they got the first prize again, second place. I would say that the worst position they've been has been a third place, but mainly uh, first uh, four times and then twice second and only once they came third. And I'm not sure if this year we will be able to have uh, ISC, but uh, it will be good also to continue with that trend. We already have got a team which is ready that has been trained. And if ISC continues, we will be having a team in there. So this has been a very good program and that builds our skills in the country. And I hope with that, at least it gives you an indication of what we do with cyber infrastructure in South Africa. And uh, uh, I'm happy to receive questions. Thank you. Thank you, Happy. That was a very, very nice presentation of uh, what you're up to in South Africa. <laughs> On a personal note, I was in 2013 in Frankfurt at ISC, and I saw your students when they learned that they've won. That was a mm. marvelous uh, sight. They were so enthusiastic, happy. I was really moved. So congratulations for this uh, incredible success with uh, educating students. Later Thank you, Mark. The, later during the conference, uh, you'll hear from our students. Of course, I. Uh, we try to learn from you and uh, train our students. They haven't got to that uh, great level, but they are doing fine. Okay. Uh, now I would like to open the floor for, for question or two. The question is, do you cooperate or plan to with East African countries like Ethiopia? Um, at, 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 at the moment, there is no active um, collaboration with Ethiopia, but there has been some uh, discussion with uh, their uh, government, uh, but we plan to work together with all the African countries. Like uh, we do some of the countries I didn't mention here, like your Benin, Cameroon, uh, we work with them. Uh, I think the only country close to East of Africa is Kenya. Uh, at the moment that we are working with. But it will be very good to work with Ethiopia because I understand they are also interested in being part of the square kilometer array. Well, it, uh, we'll have a speaker talking about Ethiopian situation in a moment. Before oh, That's good. To, I will listen to that one. Yes, mm -hmm. So before we move to the topics of Ethiopian development, uh, I want to ask you a question, Happy. Uh, I know that South Africa has uh, shared another common uh, thing with Poland, uh, with ICM especially, that we run the same uh, weather model, the uh, unified model from the uh, Met Office. Could you yes. say something how this model is used for studying, for example, draft and uh, 
uh, crops and weather change, all those things. Yeah, I, I did not uh, specifically put that one because it had an animation, but we do quite a lot with uh, the South African Weather Service. Uh, first of all, we're not just uh, providing support for them. Uh, they run uh, their own system where they are doing daily forecasting. And then for their long-term uh, forecasting, they use our larger system, that's CHPC. So we basically have optimized the unified model uh, in different architectures. The other thing that we are doing, we are a failover service for the South African weather services, uh, doing the, uh, the, 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 the forecasting on uh, the daily forecasting. So uh, the unified model is being used uh, for those short-term forecasting and then the long-term forecasting. We also do some of uh, the packages for the international protocol on climate change and we use both the unified model and uh, WRF. So we have got uh, a team uh, in South Africa that uh, uh, understand the unified model very well. I think we were the first uh, site to run unified model on the Intel processors. Before that, unified model was just optimized for power processors, uh, which you were running on the IBM systems. Thank you very much, Happy. Uh, great to hear you. Uh, great to have a participant from S South Africa.